Hello, mathematicians. This is Ms. Backfish, and I am here with you looking at some quadratic equations. And I was asked to solve these two questions by some students, and um, the first one said specifically solve the equation using the quadratic formula. So first of all, these are both quadratic equations, meaning the biggest um, exponent, the biggest power of x is 2. We have an x squared. So that makes it a quadratic equation. And quadratic equations, we like to look at them in standard form. Quadratic expressions, really, we like to look at in this form, even if it's not an equation, even if you don't have equal something. And that allows us to identify an A, a B, and a C here. A is the coefficient of the x squared term. B is the coefficient of x. And C is the constant. So now keep in mind, a is the number in front of x squared. a does not include x squared. b is the number in front of x. It does not include the x. Okay, so in order to use the quadratic formula, which my screen seems a little, there we go, frozen, we have to identify the a, the b, and the c. And then we can use the quadratic formula, which says that your x is equal to the opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so the first one here, it's pretty close to being in standard form. This is standard form. All I'm going to do to get this in standard form is I'm going to, then I have 2x squared, subtract 8x from both sides gives me minus 8x, and then it's gone from this side. Subtract 3 from both sides gives me minus 3, and then it's gone from this side, and so I just have equal 0. This is what I want, okay? So this is one of the main things we do when we're starting to solve a quadratic equation is we like to put it all on one side where the other side equals zero. This is especially true if we're not going to solve using the square root method, which basically means if we have an x that's not squared, then I really have to do this. I need to get everything on one side equals zero on the other side. If all of your x's are inside something squared or are squared themselves, then you can possibly use the square root method and maybe set it up a little differently. But this is not a bad first step pretty much any time you're looking at a quadratic equation. Okay, so now the beauty of this is that I can identify my A, my B, and my C. You can't identify those until it's in standard form. I can't just look up here and say, oh, I know what A, B, and C are. Here is A, here is B, here is C. Notice that B is negative 8. It takes the sign that's in front of it. C is negative 3. A is just positive 2. So now I'm ready to plug in. A couple of things to know about the quadratic formula. Actually, three big things I want to impress upon you. One is that it always works. You can use this for any quadratic. So that's the beauty of it. You can't always factor. Um, you can't always take the square root, at least not until you complete a square. But you can always use the quadratic formula. The drawback, the reason we don't just do it all the time, is that there's a lot going on in here. And so it's very easy to make an arithmetic mistake or a sign mistake. So be super careful when you're plugging in and simplifying. A couple of things to be careful of. This says the opposite of B. It doesn't mean that it's going to be negative. It means it's going to be the opposite of whatever B is. My B here is already negative. My B is negative 8. So when I do the opposite of B, I'm going to write positive 8. Let me go ahead and write along the side here. A is 2, B is negative 8, and C is negative 3. So when I plug in and do the opposite of B, that's going to be a positive 8 out in front. Then I write plus or minus, and then square root. B squared is always going to be positive. If b is negative or if b is positive, the b squared part is always going to be positive here. So you'll never have a negative right inside the, the radical right here. So negative 8 squared, that's 64. Minus 4 times a times c. I want you to notice that I wrote all of this out. I always do because this is one of the most common places to make an arithmetic or sign error. Okay, notice that 3 is negative here. If either one of these two, the A or the C, if either one of them, just one of them, is negative, 
this whole thing's going to turn into adding because you have a minus out front and then having one minus inside of here minus a negative makes it plus so that's all going to turn into plus in a second when I simplify this we're not going to have subtraction going on under the radical and this is all over 2 times a all right from here on it's just simplifying so 8 plus or minus 64 and like I told you this is going to turn into plus because it's negative 4 and negative 3 this all turns to plus so 4 times 2 is 8 times 3 is 24 so plus 24 all over 2 times 2 is 4 this is 8 plus or minus that's 88 all over 4 we do need to simplify our radicals if we can and in this case, the biggest perfect square that I can think of that goes into um, 88 would be 4. 4 is a perfect square. Why does that matter to me? Well, let me grab a piece of paper here. I'll pause so you don't have to wait me for me to root around for paper. All right, and you got to enjoy my dog barking there too, so sorry. So this is just simplifying the square root of 88 here. The biggest perfect square that goes into it is 4. And that's beautiful because square root of 4 comes out as a 2. Okay, I know that this doesn't simplify any further because if you think about how to break down 22, that's just 2 times 11, and neither of those is a perfect square. So that's just going to have to stay square root of 22 under there. So I've got 8 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 22 all over 4. Now, in this case, this can be simplified. And let me point out that an expression like this can only be simplified if a number here, the number here, and the number here all have something that goes into them. In other words, they all have a common factor. In this case, that's 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4, plus or minus. 2 divided by 2 is just 1. So I don't have to write the 1. I can just write square root of 22 there. And 4 divided by 2 is 2. This does not simplify further. I cannot simplify just that part because I don't have a number out here to simplify with the two. Multiplication and division, when you have radicals, numbers that are both under the radical can be multiplied or divided. Numbers that are both outside of the radical can be multiplied or divided. So I can't do anything between this number underneath the radical and this guy that's outside of the radical. So that's my simplest form. I could rewrite that as two separate fractions and maybe simplify one of them if I wanted to. There's really not a need to do that. All right, now this next question did not say solve using the quadratic formula, but I want to. It said solve using any method you want to. Here's what I want to point out about this one. This looks like factored form, or it is factored form of a quadratic. And very often we solve quadratics by getting them factored and then we set each factor equal to zero. For instance, we'll have something like, um, let's do x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals zero, and that's x plus 2 times x plus 1. And then I set each of these factors equal to zero, and I solve and say, okay, x could equal negative 2, or x could equal negative 1. And those are the two values of x that I could plug in up here that would give me 0. Here's what I want you to notice. If we're going to factor to solve, we have to have a 0 on the right. Because what we're doing here is called the zero product property. It says if two things multiply to give you 0, then one of them has to be 0. Either x is negative 2, which makes this 0, or x is negative 1, which makes this 0 but we would have to have a zero on the right. That's not what's happening here. So this is not, hey, it's already factored, it's time to solve, let's just set each factor equal to zero. This is not that. Instead, I'm actually gonna have to multiply this back out. So I'm gonna multiply five x because I want to get this zero. So I have to, I'm gonna have to incorporate this over here. So five x times x is five x squared. Five x times two is 10 x. 1 times x is 1x, and 1 times 2 is 2. All right, I can combine these like terms, 5x squared plus 11x, and I can add the 1 to both sides, plus 3. Now I have the 0 on the right-hand side. 
So now I am ready to solve this. Um, I could potentially factor. Let's see if this would factor. Um, I would have to be able to find two numbers that multiply to give me 15 and add to give me the 11. And I can't think of any such number. So this does not factor. If you're wondering where that thinking process comes from, look and see if you can find my video on factoring by grouping. When the number up front here is not 1 and you need to factor, that's how you want to factor is by grouping. You can also incorporate something called the box method. That's really the same thing. It's just a slightly different way of, of displaying the same work. Okay, so if I can't factor it, my go-to is always quadratic formula because quadratic formula always works. So now it's in standard form. Here is my A, here is my B, here is my C. So A is 5, B is 11, C is 3, and remember it's opposite of B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. I advise not trying to put it all in your calculator at once because it's very easy for you to type something in that the calculator does in a different order than you intend for it to be done. So I like to simplify this a little first. So I'll, first I'll plug it in. Sometimes I plug it in exactly as it is. No simplifying. So like opposite of 11 is negative 11 plus or minus square root of b squared is going to be 11 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Notice here nothing is going to turn this into a positive. So it is going to be subtraction here. 5 and 3 are both positive. So when I multiply negative 4 times 5 times 3, this is all going to stay negative. So that's nice. I don't have to worry about getting tripped up by that. So negative 11 plus or minus 11 squared is 121. 4 times 5 is 20 times 3 is 60. So this is minus 60 all over 2 times 5, which is 10. And again, this is how I very often, like if I'm doing a problem my you know, on my own, not for students, I very often go through a lot of this process by hand so that I don't accidentally mess something up in, in the way I type it into the calculator. All right, so I have to decide whether square root of 61 can be simplified. I have to think about what numbers multiply to give me 61 and if any of them are perfect squares. I'm pretty sure that 61 is prime. And I can actually check to see if it can be simplified using a calculator that will simplify radicals for me. And look, it doesn't simplify. That means that can't be simplified. So this is my final answer. There's nothing to simplify. I can't simplify the radical. I can't divide anything by 10 or by 11 or by 2 or anything like that. So that's it. That's my final answer. I hope this has helped you with the quadratic formula. Just be very careful when applying it. It always works, but only if you are super careful with your arithmetic and your signs. So just take your time. And one thing a lot of times students don't get about taking your time and being careful is use plenty of space. Um, I'll tell my students sometimes, sorry, but as much as I love the environment, this is not the time to be worried about killing trees. Don't try to cram all of this, and I think my visuals paused here. But don't try to cram all of this in a little bitty space because you're going to read something wrong. You're going to miss a sign or something like that if you try to do that. So use plenty of space so that you can make sure you catch everything you need to catch in terms of your arithmetic and your signs. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.